Now, restrictions placed on restaurants and watering holes are proving to be a massive headache for authorities here in South Africa. This as they grapple with ways to slow the spread of uh, COVID-19. Now, this week, it was announced no alcohol can be sold, transported or distributed after 6 p.m. Restaurants have also been told that they can't have more than 50 people under their roof at any given time. Now, popular high-profile Johannesburg restaurants, Marble and Saint, have decided the safest option for their staff and clients is to close their doors for now. To talk to us about that, I'm joined by their co-owner and well-known chef, David Higgs via Skype. David, thanks so much for joining us from the comfort of your kitchen. Uh, you announced the closing of the doors of your restaurants very early on uh, and long before many other businesses perhaps decided to do the same thing. Give us an idea of what was top of mind for you and your partners when discussing this important decision. Yeah, I think I'm very fortunate to have, I think that's exactly it. I think uh, uh, a partner that thinks uh, very, very similar to what I do. And, and the decision for us is very, very easy. We have a lot of people coming through the restaurant every day. We're very, very fortunate. And a large portion of those people are international travelers and, and business travelers. Uh, and we, our staff are exposed to that, you know, and, and we really, that was the first thing that came to mind is that we really need to uh, keep their welfare um, at heart. Um, I think secondly, uh, most importantly, is that, you know, I think what people don't realize, and I, it blows my mind that, uh, that, that sometimes things are just going on as per normal. We, like the sooner that we can get this thing under control, the, the sooner we can get back to some form of normality, you know, uh, and, uh, and that really was the, the thinking behind that. Was it clear to you at that time that there was no way that you could operate while also ensuring the safety of your staff, your clients, and of course your service providers as well? Uh, there's, there's no doubt. You know, the, the, the amount of people coming in and out of the doors, uh, the amount of staff that we have. I mean, we have 300 staff between the two restaurants. Um, there's no way that you can ensure safety. You know, washing your hands is just not enough, you know. And, and again, it's about the safety of our, our, our guests as well. Um, so, so, yeah, there, there, there was very little, uh, very little decisions to be made. It was, it was pretty obvious what we had to do. Um, it must be very scary, just as a normal South African, but of course also a business owner. I know you take uh, uh, providing work to your staff, developing them uh, and uh, providing food on the table for their families very seriously. It's very close to your heart. Um, how scary and difficult has it been to communicate with them when you also know that you also don't know all the answers? I think that's, oh, I can tell you, that's probably the... That's the hardest thing, you know, it's like we don't have the answers, you know, we don't know how long this is going to last. And, uh, and, and that, was, that was by a long shot and is by a long shot the, the, the hardest thing for us as, as owners of this business. Um, I think, the, you know, the, the, the one thing is that fortunately we had, we had measures in place and, and you know, there, there is a certain amount of time that we can, that we can uh, look after them. Um, but, you know, as you know, we, we don't know how, how long this is, is really going to last. So I think uh, um, that still is today. We're still not clear of, of we, we just get very short term sort of answers and, and um mm. Uh, and we now have to rethink our businesses. Like, I think the restaurant industry will change forever. You know, like we really have to think about about how how we do things going forward, and especially looking after the people that we employ. I mean, you can imagine how many people are employed um, in in the hospitality industry in South Africa. You know. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about that now. Many uh, people talking about businesses, individuals needing to pivot is the term I'm hearing a lot of at the moment to try and be flexible. What are the options for a restaurant? It's a very difficult question because it's such a vast industry. But not everybody can then just turn around and overnight become a takeaway service because you're in the business of more than just making food and putting it on a plate. Well, that's, that's exactly it, you know, and it's, it's, it's probably one of the reasons why we haven't really sort of, you know, people are... Uh, um, are quite surprised why we haven't started that almost straight away. Um, but I think we, don't, we just don't want to do what everybody else is doing. I think, you know, uh, we run the danger that everybody is now doing it. And, and, and again, you know, we, we, we need to try and sort of safeguard our, our team and the people that work for us. And, and we, we've got to think almost further than that. So that's what we're busy doing at the moment. And um, yes, takeaways is one way of doing it. Uh, um, you know, uh, meals that you're preparing for the for the family that they can come and pick up. Uh, um, you know, is is obviously a, a, another way. But 
it's a, it's a very difficult question to answer, and mm. these are things that we're mm. battling with at the moment. You know, unfortunately, I don't really have mm. the answers. Yeah, to be honest no, with you. No, nobody does. But I suppose talking about it is the most important thing. Communicating uh, continuously is the most important thing. You th said at the beginning your decision to close your your restaurants for now was because you wanted to be part of a solution to try and get this thing under control as quickly as possible, so that the damage isn't as vast as we fear. Uh, uh, on a lighter note, though, before I let you go, you're doing your part on social media. I see you started a little uh, movement last night called hashtag what's in your fridge. Tell us very quickly about that. Uh, you know, I think in all of this that's going on, you know, we need to laugh. You know, I, I uh, for me, that's that's always the best medicine. And uh, it's a, you know, it's a, <laughs> I can tell you, I've got so many pictures of the inside of a fridge. I don't know what to do with all of them. So uh, it's just, it's just really to, to see the human and all and, uh, and to see how people live. You know, I think the important thing is now is that we try and stay as healthy as we possibly can. We maybe not exercising as much as we can. So, so just think about what you're eating every day and, and, and just watch, just watch that, that we look after ourselves in, in this time. Thank you so much for your time. Chef and uh, restaurant owner David Higgs, live for us there from his kitchen. I'm sure so many of us would love to eat in the kitchen one day. Uh, but until such time, go onto his Instagram account, hashtag what's in your fridge. Um, I will probably have to go and clean my fridge first before I become a part of that. And he and his staff are going to give you suggestions as to what you can make for supper or lunch with what you have in the fridge as we probably head towards rationing before we can order online or head out to a shop in the most responsible way. We thank him for his time this morning.